Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Relics, and today we're going to do a few more player reviews from the 2022-23 season as we head into the next season. Uh, so again, we'll start off with uh, we'll start off with the D-man, uh, Alexander Edler. Played 64 games this season. He is uh, excluding Quick. He is actually the oldest player on the team at 36 years of age. He played. He played okay. I mean, I wouldn't say he is anything worth noting. Um, he only got two goals, nine assists, 11 points, minus one rating, 34 penalty minutes, 14, 46 time on ice. You know, pretty much standard third deep uh, pair. You know stuff nothing nothing noteworthy nothing stands out uh, i will say that the only thing i can't say positive about what he did is just some of the moments where he played really good d as far as standing up at the blue line um he did you know he still throws his body around and he he gets in on the 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 boards you know the board battles and does you know hit guys so i will i do appreciate that but otherwise there's not much to really say about edler Unfortunately, he is getting older and, you know, high 30s to 40s, that's when the NHL starts to really close down for, you know, for, for athletes and he's one of them. Unfortunately, unless you're the most top tier guys, he, it's just not going to work out. And unfortunately, that's what's, that's what's happening to Edler. Um, yeah, so obviously the Kings haven't re-signed him and aren't, I don't think they're planning on to do so. And I don't think any other team in the league will most likely sign him, so I think he is done. I think it's time to retire. But as far as what he has done with the Kings, I appreciate what he has done, and I think uh, you know he was a good he, he was good to have around. He was a good uh, mentor, you can say, for the young guys coming in. And so I wish him all the best if he retires. If not, I wish him the best wherever he goes. Either way, you know. Thank you for a, few, a good few years, and hopefully uh, it works out going forward for him. Next up, we have a forward, Jarrett Anderson Dolan. Um, this guy, he uh, when he first got drafted, I was excited to see him play. But after seeing him play in the NHL with us, granted, it, you know, it's off and on kind of thing, but I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed that he hasn't grown into the player I thought he would. I thought he would be a solid middle six style, style player, like a two A or a playmaker, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. He isn't. I, I think he lacks confidence, um, and I think that really reflects his stats um, going into the season. Or now that the, uh, he's done the season, it's forty six games played this season. Uh, I believe that's the most he's ever played in a single season. He only got seven goals, five assists for twelve points. He had a minus eleven. That's the worst plus minus rating on the team if you exclude Dursey, who I explained in a previous video doesn't deserve that minus, you know. But again, if you guys haven't watched it, please feel free to go watch that and you know understand why. I don't think he is the worst plus minus, but that makes Jad the worst plus minus on the team. And unfortunately, it's because he doesn't play enough, you know, of an assertive game. I've mentioned it before on like Grunstrom and Kaliev. How they don't use their assertiveness to get in on the plays and take shots. Uh, I think Jad is the same thing. Unfortunately, he he doesn't have the tenacity to get in on the plays, forecheck hard, you know, take the shot. I think he has a decent playmaking style, and I think he doesn't utilize it enough. Nor has the Kings set him up to use it enough as well. But overall, considering he comes in and out of the lineup. You know, it's just never going to be consistent enough. Um, the only thing I will say, after 46 games, he only took one minor penalty. Two penalty minutes total on the year. So he is very disciplined. He is a very quiet, humbled guy. But again, I need to see more assertiveness. I need to see more coming from him. And if he is going to stay with the team going forward, he needs to do better. I mean, he's still young, no doubt. But he needs to play harder. Otherwise, he's going to be a, you know, a scratch slash bottom liner for the rest of his career which you know no one really wants to be like that you know no one wants to be the extra guy that just comes in and out of the lineup and so if he can improve his game even just a little bit you know make it make it to the 25 point area you know i think he you know he'd benefit from a lot of um you know one he'll benefit from his teammates because 
you know, playing together, you guys build chemistry. And then you guys also build each other up, you know, make each other look good. But he needs to put himself more out there and do better. Um, again, his face-offs are decent too. He you know, only took 23 total face-offs. But he mostly played wing. So he was kind of the extra guy. But when he did take face-offs, he won 16 of those and took, you know, 59%. So he can he can win face-offs. And I think maybe that's what he needs. Maybe he needs to play center. Unfortunately, this isn't the year to do it now. As I mentioned before, projected lineups show Kopi, Dubois, Deneau, and Lazat as the four straight-up centers. Um, I don't think there's room for him to play center. So unfortunately, he's going to have to stick to the wing. And we'll see how he does because honestly, it's just not looking like a good year for him. But we'll see. We will see. So if he does make the opening roster, I'll be a little surprised. But I am expecting him to just be a scratch anyways or heck, he might even be traded. So we'll see how it goes. And then last uh, for this video, we're going to talk about Brendan Lemieux, who was traded to the Philadelphia Flyers, I believe. Flyers? I think it was the Flyers, yes. And then uh, he played 27 games this season. Only got three assists on the season. That's it. Minus six rating, 53 penalty minutes. Only had eight minutes and 30 seconds time on ice. And that is a pretty low number uh, for someone like him. He was fifth in forward hits. So which, that's pretty cool. But again, that's his style, right? He has to grind it out. Um, I appreciated his, his duo teamwork with Lazat going the past couple of years but this past year it just wasn't there i think now that lizotte has moved on to be more of a skilled player and more you know more of his own style of game uh lemieux was kind of like his bodyguard whenever lizotte was getting picked on you know on the ice he would come uh, lemieux would come in and rough up the guys who were roughing up lizotte either both would go in the penalty box or both would or, or maybe just Lemieux goes in the penalty box. And I think that happened more often than not. And so, in the end, Lemieux's style just didn't work with the Kings anymore. He was drawing too many penalties that led to goals against. And, you know, he was just undisciplined this past season. Even I can see that. Uh, regardless of how much, you know, personality he does bring to the room. And, you know, how much that his grinding style of play is is needed on the Kings... You know, taking penalties at wrong times and having a reputation for it too, that the referees will immediately throw him in the box even without real reason to. That's that's just unfortunate and we, do, we just don't need that on the team. Um, that's why I like players like Curtis McDermott. Even though he was a defenseman instead of a forward, McDermott, you know, he he grinds it out. He, he hits hard. I mean, he's a really big guy. But at the same time, he knows how to play and he knows when to, you know, initiate something or not and i think that's what lemieux is lacking and that's kind of why his career is kind of you know kind of on a down low because he doesn't know when to assert himself over the top or not and that's just part of you know that's just part of the game now um referees are trying to take charge not allow you know these kind of things to happen and unfortunately uh lemieux game suffers from it so either way um He's gone, and he, I, I believe he signed in Carolina with the Hurricanes. So going forward, I think he, I think that's a decent fit because Hurricanes are filled with a lot of skilled players up top, and so sliding in on the bottom lines as a grinding style player definitely will work out for him. And I wish him all the best. Obviously, not against us, but I do wish him all the best going forward. We did, we did like him here, uh, at least I did, and. You know, hopefully he uh, he finds his game a little bit more and you know changes the way he's you know seen in the league. Otherwise, he'll probably just end up cutting his career short. But again, that's just my opinion. Let me let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree with anything I've said in this video? And hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more content. And yeah, we're moving, we're moving on in the roster. We're almost done with the whole team. Um, probably do a few more, you know, less so important guys, but we'll see. And then, uh, yeah, and then the preseason starts on Saturday and Sunday in Australia for the Kings, and we'll see how they do there as well. Uh, don't know if I'm going to do a video on them. 
because it's just preseason, but we'll see. We will see. But otherwise, that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.